Hello, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking. Today we're going to do a video on something I call the board. And I call it an instrument into the other world or the vehicle to the void, or maybe even both. Okay. So sometimes when I'm getting into like a Friday night late, I start thinking about, you know, maybe writing a new article or something, or I possibly even am getting ready for the uh, weekend uh, production of some videos for the channel. So sometimes, of course, just like writers all over the world, you kind of have this, as I call it, the old brain fart. When I was younger, I used to call it the new brain fart. But anyways, so usually what I'll do is I kind of go into a little quick meditation and ask the cosmos for a little help. And sure enough, uh, typically uh, the, uh, the frozen neurons uh, become uh, awakened and I get some pretty interesting ideas to do some of my writing or, or preparing for a video. So anyway, so that happened recently. And uh, so I decided to talk about one of my uh, favorite subjects, the board, as I call it, or the Ouija board, as other people call it, or just the Ouija. Um, so first of all, I just want to give you a, just a little bit of history about it, because some people will be kind of surprised about it. Uh, surprising, it was uh, actually created in the United States, okay? And it was in the... Uh, 1870s by a guy named Reich, and he built uh, the first one, which was uh, a wooden one. And uh, it had, it sort of had some of the appearances of some Egyptian elements in it too. So where he got that, uh, the idea for the board, nobody seems to know. But anyways, it seems like he was interested in Egyptian type things. Um, it really was a, a beautiful piece of artwork. Apparently, it still exists some in some museum somewhere. And and then uh, this guy Reich ended up selling it to two brothers, uh, a Kendall and a, a Marpin. And uh, so, anyways, they they used it and they uh, apparently built more of them. Okay, and apparently they did uh, quite well uh, in their venture, and there it started growing and more people started um you know using it and and i guess in a way enjoying it uh so they started marketing it and then uh, a guy named uh bill uh, fold he went ahead and bought the whole business uh him and his brother and they they made it a lot of money for the next 35 years um in the Ouija board business, okay? And they pretty much had cornered the market, I guess, in many ways. And then then something interesting happened, I guess tragically interesting happened. Uh, the original of this uh, Folt guy, he committed suicide at the age 57. Now, nobody really knows it was just uh, maybe a jealous relative or, or maybe it was the Ouija board. And only the Ouija board would really probably know that answer. And then in 1942, the family uh, sold the game board to the Parker brothers. And we all know who the Parker brothers are because I think they are at one point were the largest game, game maker, uh, uh, board game maker in the world. And they're still really big on it. And so they've had it. They've had the, the rights to it since 1942. So it's been a huge, it's been like, what, 80 probably 84 years, I guess, or 82 years uh, they've had this in there. And I think they've done very well from it. Um, so the Ouija board has been around for about 140 years, okay? Um, so people have been playing it, and I always say they're playing with this vehicle because it is truly a vehicle. Um, and I believe that like 90% of the encounters or the playing with this vehicle have been fine. No issues, no problems. But the other 10%, uh, I would debate, and some people would debate that's a very high number, actually had something that went wrong and possibly even messed with their mind, or as I call it, screwed with their mind. Um, 
And and basically, my feeling has always been the more you play with the Ouija board, you up your chances basically to have a bad experience. Okay. And of course, it's quite addictive. You know, it's the the thrill of the unknown and a possible glimpse uh, into the spirit world keeps people coming back to it. Okay. And again, increasing the chances that you're going to have a bad experience with it. And and there has been quite a few people that have had bad experiences with it. And, and I've talked to some of them. Okay. And we'll talk about it later. Um, so what's happening here? Well, I believe there's several things. As we play with the board, uh, we ask questions uh, of these entities that are behind the scenes, uh, which lie normally at a safe distance from us in our world plane. Okay, so when we're not playing on the Ouija board, they're at a safe distance, and we don't really have to worry about them too much. Okay, uh, but by asking questions, we are inviting them into our world. Okay. And they love to visit. These little entities, they love to visit us. It would not be too bad, but they like to take bits of stuff back to their world. Okay? You know, they, sometimes they'll, they'll take stuff, they'll take memories from the most vulnerable players. Okay? People that are fearful of the Ouija board. Those are the vulnerable players. Um, and as the law between worlds is that we must balance out the worlds and we leave something behind in the world that they take it from. Uh, so normal uh, human memories are taken and replaced with non-human thoughts. That's what happens. That's what I believe happens. And that's what people that have been involved have played the Ouija board for a long time. So I am talking about looking into the void, a very dark void at that, okay? People whose minds are filled with fear are of danger of losing a bit of their sanity if they play with the board because the board will play with you, okay? That's, that's the critical, that's the criticality here, okay? The board will play with you, okay? Once you get it going, once you stir it up, once you show that you have fear of the board, if you don't have fear of the board and protect yourself, you will probably have no problems with the board. I played with the Ouija board, uh, and I'll, I'll share some of my stuff in part two. This is going to be a two-parter. Um, so anyways, well, I may, I may not, actually, I may not make it a part two. I think I'm, I'm going to keep on rolling with this. We'll make it one part. I'm just, it's going to be a little longer than usual. So anyways. So again, the board will play with you. Remember that. That's that's the that's the critical thing. Um, so let's continue. Um, I am I am with going to talk about some more stuff, and this this part will be kind of uh, uh, personal. Um, I will talk about some personal experiences, and we'll also talk about the uh, the board. The board itself and some other people that have experiences. Okay, so when I was about uh, ten or eleven, my my buddies got a hold of an old Ouija board. Okay, now I'm make a, another comment. An old Ouija board, very important because new ones don't have a lot of stuff connected with it. Okay, old ones have a lot of stuff. A lot of energy has gone through these Ouija boards, and it's still there. It's still there, basically waiting for the right person. Um, and what, what has probably saved us when we were very young is that we didn't have any preconceived notions. We didn't have any fear. We just we just said, well, this is like a board game. Let, let's play it. And because we didn't have any fear, we were fearless, as I call it, uh, the evil kind of entities that hang out weren't able to draw some of the things they were looking for from us. We, we, pay, we played several times, and we definitely seemed to be communicating with something. We definitely felt that we were. So that we had some strange feelings. Hot and cold ran through our bodies. Is, for some reason, that was a feeling that we were getting. Some of us said we felt cold. While we were playing, some people felt we felt hot. They felt hot. Um, 
and it, and at times, you know, our there would be our little our little body hairs would stand up on end, uh, and that was you know that was something uh, that was I guess a bit of a, a bit of a scariness in itself. I now feel that the beings we were dealing with meant us no harm. I don't I don't think there was any harm for us. We were lucky. We were definitely lucky at that time. The other types would have created fear sooner or later, and the innocence of this world would have ended. And and we probably, let me think, if I can remember, and I'm going back a lot of years, I believe we play, played it about four times as, a, as that particular group. And that, for some reason, that was kind of the end of it. Um, so it was about four times, and I think we got out with no no issues that I'm aware of. One, one of my... Uh, Brothers, one of my friend's uh, brothers um, were, at least this is what I was told, had a mental breakdown after she used to play the Ouija board by herself. If you play it or try it, never do it alone. Never do the Ouija board alone. Now, I know there's going to be people out there and say, oh, I've done it alone many times, no problems, blah, blah, blah. Most of the problems that I've heard about over the years were because of people were playing it alone. It seems like when you play it alone, these entities can focus, all of them can focus on you. When you're playing with a group, they, this kind of weird energy that goes on has to be spread among the, the people around. And they don't, for some reason, they can't grip onto you. Uh, I guess humans have some strength to resist this, but when you're by yourself, uh, you can't, or you can as well. Anyways, let's put it that way. Okay. So again, never do it alone because I don't think you are again, a match for a group of otherworldly entities that are trying to harm you or trying to do something to you or take something from you, etc. So that's, that's kind of a lesson that I've kind of learned over the years. I lived in two, and then again, I li next I lived in Tucson for several years and met a guy uh, who referred to himself as the old hippie. Okay, he was a smart guy who had a very wonderful and smart wife. Both of them were very curious about everything in the world, including drugs and the board. Okay, I, they probably mixed it sometime, uh, so that probably didn't help because that taking drugs basically will make you weak. From a standpoint, you cannot defend yourself as well. I mean, it only makes sense, okay? You know, like alcohol, other types of drugs, your mind is not quite on its peak, okay? And and I don't have to tell you that. I think everybody knows that one. Um, well, he seemed to not have a problem with it, but over time, and my the old hippie guy, but over time, his wife became withdrawn and depressed. My old... Uh, old hippie friend told me over a few years later that she told him that the board had come to her in a dream and showed her something that terrified her, nearly put her into shock, and and she was really never the same. And no therapy seemed to help her. Uh, yeah, I met her, and that's absolutely right. She was not the same person she was when I first met her. Uh, it had absolutely done something to her. Uh, I, you know, I was hoping maybe she would tell her husband or tell me or tell somebody what she actually saw. I don't know what it was. Um, so then, then there was a fam the famous case, and I'm sure some of you've heard of it. It was called the uh, uh, Gulf Breeze Six. I lived in Atlanta when it happened, and I was really lucky to get close to talk with uh, a person. Um, Actually, we brought this person to a group that I work with in Atlanta, the Atlanta Paranormal UFO uh, Forum. And this, the brothers, and he, and he talked about his brother's experience. And this guy's name was, I think, Vance Davis, if I remember correctly. Um, this information back in the early 60s was to say, was a, at the very least mind blowing. Okay, at that time, there was very little known about this incident. The uh, Gulf Breeze Six. So, these were six military personnel from an intelligence unit. They started playing with the Ouija board. 
Okay, so these guys are already into intelligence. They're pretty, they're smart guys. They're very smart guys. But all of a sudden, they're playing with the Ouija board. I, I, I don't quite remember. I ended up reading the, the full book of, of the whole incident. It's really, really quite amazing. Um, so this event, they all went, they all went AWOL, actually. That's important to tell you, I guess. Um, so the mass, the the government, the military had this massive search in the southwest, southeastern part of the United States to find these guys because for some reason they had used the Ouija board and they were able to channel information of events that were going to happen in the future. Um, and I guess that completely freaked out the military because some of these events came true. Okay? Some of the events came true. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to go. It, there's a this is a long story. It's a full book, and I'm not. Gonna, I know you're going to ask me what were the events. And actually, at this moment, I could not pull them up. But I remember reading a book, and I remember saying to myself, and this goes back uh, 40 years. I remember saying, "Wow, this is true." And they predicted. And the more interesting thing, they predicted some events that came through later, and I was able to witness. I saw what it said, and I this guy told me some events at this this UFO forum, and um, he told me the events. He said, "Here's a few more events. Just keep these under your hat, and when they happen in the future, you know that that was what happened. These guys had uh, uh, actually seen seen the future, basically. Anyways, it was it was amazing. I mean, it was really amazing, and I was really fortunate to be on the ground and talk to this guy." Uh, whose brother was one of the six, okay? So, anyways, the, the thing about it is the military was freaking out. They searched all over him. I think eventually they did find, I think they found, at least at the time, uh, I remember, I think four out of the six. I don't know if they found the last two guys. Eventually, who knows? Maybe they did. Um, so, anyways, these guys, again, you got to remember, these guys were intelligence, Um and I, apparently the board, the theory was, is the Ouija board intensified their psychic abilities to the horror, I guess, of the military and the NSA. Um, and there's much more to this story. Okay, I'm just giving you a little bit of the highlights. Um, I think if you just go online and go Gulf Free 6, I think you'll get the information and the name of the book. I think there's probably several books that were written about it, but it's definitely worth the read. It really is a great book. Uh, books. Um, and, and like I say, it was much more to this story. So in conclusion, I just want to say this. Um, the Ouija is, is not just a board, but also a vehicle to travel to the beyond, and which needs only to be used by a few who are totally protect themselves, protect themselves, their minds, and their souls. Okay, it's really, really important. And let me let me say this. Um, I've also been told one thing, and this was through my research on the Ouija board. And I don't really quite know what this means. And I, there's probably some of you out there that will know exactly what, what this means. And if you do, please let me know, because I'm a little unsure of what it means. It says, the Jesus gene is what makes us interesting to those of the other worlds. Um, so if you understand what that means... Please, uh, please let me know. Um, anyways, with that said, that's it. Uh, the Ouija board is not for the faint-hearted, and I, I particularly do not. And and as years went by, and I did a little more research, I pretty much uh, told my kids, please, 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 don't use the Ouija board. Okay, uh, I think there is some inherent dangers unless you really protect yourself and you're really, really careful with it. It can really cause some harm. So anyways, with that said, we'll see. Bye-bye.